Hello, I'm at Super George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's word today. Praise God. Now, we've been sharing on character in believing. But before going to today's broadcast, I want us to receive and call for that daily bread. It's a demand the Lord asks you to make. So join me right now as we declare this word. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we bless you, Lord, because your word is coming to us in truth. And I declare every body is lifted right now. Every yoke is destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, miracles are taking place in our lives as we hear and receive your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. You know, our team scripture is Romans chapter 5. Just journey there with me as I show you what the mind of the Lord is. Here it says, thank you Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 5 from verse 2. It is by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. We glory in tribulation also. I told you, the day for yesterday and yesterday, that there is a place for challenges. What's tribulation? Challenges. There is a place for challenges in your life. You can't wish it away. You can't pray it away. See? If, if, if you are just there and there is no challenge in your life, come on, go look for some. Praise God. I'm telling you, to go look for some. You know, Peter said something in Second Peter chapter 1. He says, do diligence to make your calling an election show because it says if you do these things you would never fall do things to show that God is with you that's what challenges do in your life that's that's the purpose of those challenges because when you face them you only have one way to go through by God see now if, if so, if there are no challenges in your life, everything is just calm, everything is just okay, everything. How do you prove that God is in your life? You remember David. He was, he was taking care of his father's sheep. Then you remember the lion came, according to his words. The bear came. Now he could have just hidden somewhere and said, hey, my life is more important. What is sheep? We will always restore the sheep. But he said, no, no way. I'm not letting this lion or I'm not letting this bear take this sheep away from me. No way. He confronted them, killed the lion, killed the bear and rescued the sheep. Now that's a man who believed that God was with him. See, he, he went to give his brothers food. And then suddenly, he heard this guy challenging the whole nation of Israel, challenging the whole army. Who dare you? That, that was what went through his mind. Who is this guy that is not afraid to challenge the army of God? And he looked around the river, was shaking, and he said, oh, Now that he wasn't even qualified to be in the army, see, he wasn't qualified to go to that war. Uh, he, he wasn't qualified to be in the army for the first time. Now, if you, if you qualify to join the army, it's not everybody that joins the army that goes to war. There are some, they keep, you know, look, you're for the office, so just stay back. See, now, you remember Saul, when he went to meet Saul, Saul said, look, man, this guy has been a warrior from his youth, and you are just a youth. Praise <laughs> God. We don't know you to be a fighter. We don't know you to be a warrior. And David said, no, sir. I've been fighting my own battles. Let me give you an example. And by the time he was through, Saul said, well, 
you can go. This your confidence is, is unmatched. So you can go. And he went to, he didn't have to get into that battle. See, he, he could have just said, well, you guys, the Lord help you. Give the food to his brothers and go back home. But he got into that battle that was directly not his business. And he slew that giant Goliath. What was he doing? He was doing diligence to show that God was with him. That's what we're talking about. Character in believing. You don't, you, don't, you don't just say, I believe in God. You don't just say, I believe God is going to do this for me. I want to see the character in you that is consistent with what you're talking about. If I don't see that character, now that, you see, now, before David went to challenge Goliath, the tribulation of the lion and the bear, the victory he had when that challenge came to him, boosted his faith, see? So every challenge that comes to you and you overcome is setting you up for greater challenges. Now when you hear greater challenges, it means greater results. That's just what it is. When David killed the lion and the bear, no one clapped for him. No one knew. I'm sure even when he told people, they're like, eh, tell us another story, please. Even if he had brought the lion home, you know, just imagine carrying the lion on his shoulder. Or go, go call, hey, bros, come, come, come and see something. Or dad, come and see something. Like, what is this? He said, I killed it. Say, you. Yes, I killed it. Come on now. Tell us you found it dead. Say, no, I killed it. It came to attack me. I killed it. Please get out. They wouldn't believe him. But you see, the things God was doing in the secret was making him strong for the day he's going to be revealed in the open. So don't despise those miracles taking place in the secret. They are to form your character. Let me tell you this. Characters are not formed in the open. We rebuke our children when they are small and we rebuke them at home. The reason is so that when they go outside, they will take charge and shine. Most, most good parents in public, they don't discipline their children like that. When their children misbehave, they like they cut the eye and like hey, keep quiet. And when they go back home, they bring out the cane, the rod of correction. You know what the scripture says. And they say, "Come here. What is that thing you did today?" Oh, daddy, daddy. And then they put all those corrections. The, the child will cry. They won't listen. They will discipline that child. And when they are done, if I ever now, what's going on? In secret, you are putting all the right stuff in that child. Why? Because in the open, he ought to display all those things you're putting in secret. So the same thing with God. So don't despise those little miracles. The times you didn't have any money and someone just knocked on your door and said, maybe your neighbor. I said, oh, Ah, how's everything? I, I was cooking. I just thought to um, bring some for you. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And you've not eaten all day. Praise <laughs> God. You went there praying. Now, do you think that just happened? No, 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 it didn't just happen. It is God showing you something. And those things He's showing you, He's showing you. So that you will build experience. Now that's what New King James um, said. Exper experience is producing character. See? Character. Now, I'll give you another example. Jesus was walking with his disciples. I think this is in Matthew Matthew chapter 16. I'll read it from verse, uh, verse 
Okay, from verse 5. Yeah, good. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. I wanted to follow this now. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? Now watch what Jesus says next. Do you not yet understand? Mm. Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither, ye, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets you took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread that ye should beware of the level of the Pharisee and of the Sadducee? Did you see that? Jesus was walking with his disciples and, and, and they, they actually forgot to carry bread. Meaning, normally they used to travel with bread. So, but this time they forgot. And then, most likely, someone had raised it up. Like, hey, did you carry that bread? Oh, ah, I forgot. Ah, ooh. Anyway, let's see what's going to happen today. And then the next thing, Jesus said, hey guys, beware of the level of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. Mm, level is connected to bread. So Jesus is telling us now, let's not buy the bread produced by the Pharisee and the Sadducee. So you see now, if you have carried bread now, we'll not be looking for bread now. Now, think of it. Everywhere you go to buy bread now, the person must be connected to a Pharisee or the, or the Sadducee. So what do we do now? And Jesus is like, hey guys, what's wrong with you? Don't you yet understand? Now, what, what did he mean by that? Is this character not yet formed in you? And what did he do next? He reminded them of two bread miracles he had done before. And what was he trying to tell these folks? Hey guys, by those two miracles, you should understand that bread is not our problem. By those two miracles, which is experience now, see? Because that's what it is. And it says experience is the same as character. See, perseverance, then experience. It, it forms your character. You see, you, your character is formed based on things you have experienced. That's true about life. So you see people behaving in a certain way like, oh, I want to know the kind of family he was raised up in. I want to know the situations about his upbringing. Why? Because you believe it will influence his character. It will influence his behavior today. So Jesus said, you have experienced two miracles. It ought to form your character in what you believe. So when, when you, it comes to issues of bread, you should be able to say, no. Bread is not a problem. If we need bread, Jesus is going to give us bread. You remember the 5,000? How many baskets were there? You remember the 4,000? How many? So, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's true. Now, that's it. The formation of that character. That's what God is looking out for. That's why I said, don't despise the little miracles you see today or you have seen before. Don't despise those leads. It might be transport money someone gave to you. But you know, I didn't tell anybody I didn't have transport. How come I stood by the junction or by the bus stop and wondering how to leave there and, and someone just stops and says, hey, you're going in my direction. Let's go together. Okay. Yeah, it's an experience. All those little experiences, don't forget them. What are they doing to you? They are shaping. Now, they can only shape in when you acknowledge them as from the Lord. Our time is up. Praise God. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying this because this is the truth. Begin to reflect on the miracles that God has done in your life. 
and let it begin to draw a line you know let it begin to shape in your thoughts your character in the things you believe god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye bye